4. Attributes of the Eternal Son The Eternal Son motivates the spirit level of cosmic reality. The spiritual power of the Son is absolute in relation to all universe actualities. He exercises perfect control over the interassociation of all undifferentiated spirit energy and over all actualized spirit reality through his absolute grasp of spirit gravity. All pure, unfragmented spirit and all spiritual beings and values are responsive to the infinite drawing power of the primal sun of paradise. And if the eternal future should witness the appearance of an unlimited universe, the spirit gravity and the spirit power of the original sun will be found wholly adequate for the spiritual control and effective administration of such a boundless creation. The sun is omnipotent only in the spiritual realm. In the eternal economy of universe administration, wasteful and needless repetition of function is never encountered. The deities are not given to useless duplication of universe ministry. The omnipresence of the original Son constitutes the spiritual unity of the universe of universes. The spiritual cohesion of all creation rests upon the everywhere active presence of the divine spirit of the eternal Son. When we conceive of the Father's spiritual presence, we find it difficult to differentiate it in our thinking from the spiritual presence of the eternal Son. The spirit of the Father is eternally resident in the spirit of the Son. The Father must be spiritually omnipresent, but such omnipresence appears to be inseparable from the everywhere spirit activities of the Eternal Son. We do, however, believe that in all situations of Father-Son presence of a dual spiritual nature, the Spirit of the Son is coordinate with the Spirit of the Father. In His contact with personality, the Father acts in the personality circuit. In his personal and detectable contact with spiritual creation, he appears in the fragments of the totality of his deity, and these father fragments have a solitary, unique, and exclusive function wherever and whenever they appear in the universes. In all such situations, the spirit of the Son is coordinate with the spiritual function of the fragmented presence of the universal Father. Spiritually, the Eternal Son is omnipresent. The Spirit of the Eternal Son is most certainly with you and around you, but not within you and a part of you, like the Mystery Monitor. The indwelling Father fragment adjusts the human mind to progressively divine attitudes, whereupon such an ascending mind becomes increasingly responsive to the spiritual drawing power of the all-powerful spirit-gravity circuit of the second source and center. The original Son is universally and spiritually self-conscious. In wisdom, the Son is the full equal of the Father. In the realms of knowledge, omniscience, we cannot distinguish between the first and second sources. Like the Father, the Son knows all. He is never surprised by any universe event. He comprehends the end from the beginning. The Father and the Son really know the number and whereabouts of all the spirits and spiritualized beings in the universe of universes. Not only does the Son know all things by virtue of His own omnipresent Spirit, but the Son equally with the Father and the conjoint actor is fully cognizant of the vast reflectivity intelligence of the Supreme Being, which intelligence is at all times aware of all things that transpire on all the worlds of the seven super-universes, and there are other ways in which the Paradise Son is omniscient. The Eternal Son, as a loving, merciful, and ministering spiritual personality, is wholly and infinitely equal with the Universal Father, while in all those merciful and affectionate personal contacts with the ascendant beings of the lower realms, the Eternal Son is just as kind and considerate, just as patient and long-suffering, as are his paradise sons in the local universes who so frequently bestow themselves upon the evolutionary worlds of time. It is needless further to expatiate on the attributes of the Eternal Son. With the exceptions noted, it is only necessary to study the spiritual attributes of God the Father to understand and correctly evaluate the attributes of God the Son.